This video is for those of you who are about to take physics next semester. Now, you might be wondering, what's the best way to study in order to pass this class? What habits should you adopt now that's going to make it easier to get through this course? Well, that's what we're going to talk about in this video. So the first habit that you want to get into is number one, doing the work. There are no shortcuts around this. This means working through the homework problems at the end of the chapter. Personally, what I like to do is I like to work through at least one or two of each unique problem and then check my answer to see if I got it right. If not, I'll go back and rework the problem until I get it right. As you work through each problem, your understanding of the material, it's gonna improve. So you learn by doing, that is by taking action. Now, another point is that as you solve each problem, I recommend writing down the formulas before using it. The reason is that this is going to help you to remember the formulas so that during exam time, you won't need to rely on a cheat sheet of formulas. So I recommend writing the formulas as you use them consistently throughout the semester. Now, the second point is important too, and that is reviewing your notes consistently. Now you might be wondering, why is that so important? Well, the principles taught in a previous chapter is typically carried over in successive chapters. So for instance, chapter two of physics might be on vectors. Well, vectors is important for chapter three on projectile motion, for chapter four in forces, for chapter five in circular motion, for chapter seven when you get to momentum, so you're going to be using vectors throughout the course of physics. So if you don't learn it well in chapter two, man, you're in, you're in the hole, so to speak. So that's one reason why you want to review your notes consistently is because the previous chapter is incorporated into successive chapters. So chapter two, the principles taught there are going to be used in chapters four, five, seven, eight, nine, and so forth. Now, a second reason why you want to review your notes consistently throughout the semester is that it's going to make it easier for you during final exam season. You won't need to spend hours cramming on the night before the exam. You could just walk into class and take the final. So here's an example of what I would do. Let's say if we're studying chapter five in a textbook, I would spend 10 or 15 minutes, maybe once a month or maybe once every two weeks simply reviewing what I learned in chapters three and four. So if I'm on chapter eight, I would spend another 15 minutes reviewing what I've learned in chapter four and five. And I would do this consistently throughout the semester. Just take a few minutes, just to review my old notes. The goal here is to avoid forgetting what I learned previously. So as a result, during final exam season, I won't need to study much since I've already been studying throughout the semester. I won't need to cram during the final exam. Now, step three is also useful, and that is taking advantage of extra credit assignments. If your professor offers that option, doing this can only help your grades, so it makes sense to take advantage of extra credit assignments. And also, the more problems that you work through, you're going to be in a better position to do well on the final. So. You learn more as you do more. So if you go to YouTube and if you type in physics basic introduction, this video should show up. If you don't see it, you know, type in organic chemistry tutor. And it should definitely show up. Now, this is for those of you who want to get a head start in your next physics class, particularly if you're taking physics one. Now, this video is going to give you a basic introduction to some key concepts that are taught in physics, like the difference between distance and displacement, speed and velocity. A key difference is velocity is a vector. It has magnitude and direction, speed is not. Displacement is a vector, distance is not. And there are some other key topics you wanna to know, like what's the difference between a scalar and a vector quantity? What is acceleration? What is projectile motion? What's Newton's first, second, third law? 
what's a normal force? What's static and kinetic friction? So these are concepts that you're going to learn in the first semester of physics. So it gives you a good basic understanding of these concepts. So when you hear them in class, you won't be completely lost, so to speak. So it's good to study the material ahead of time. It's going to put you at an advantage because when you hear the material a second time in class, it will simply reinforce what you already know. And plus, it'll add to your learning when you hear new concepts and principles. So feel free to take a look at that video when you get a chance. Now, this is the free version, which is only 53 minutes long. I do have a paid version, which is longer. So if we click on this video, and if you go to the description part where it says show more, you can access the full length video either on Patreon or my YouTube membership program. So we click this video here. This is for my YouTube members only, but it's the full video. Now let's go back. Now, if you click this link, this is the direct link to the video on Patreon. And once you sign up, you can access the full one hour, 42 minute video. So this is what it's going to look like when you sign up at my Patreon page, which is at patreon.com slash math science tutor. Once you log in, if you go to, if you click on this physics post, it'll show you all of my physics videos. And here is the full length version of the video we were just talking about. As you can see, it's an hour and 42 minutes long. Now, one of the advantages of signing up for my Patreon account is that I have worksheets available as well, in addition to the full length videos. I know some of you out there, you wanted a worksheet where you can get a printout of all the practice problems in the full length video. I have that in my Patreon page. Right now, YouTube doesn't have a way for me to make those files accessible to you, so you can get them only through Patreon at this point. But here is the other videos that I have, the full length videos for physics. I have distance displacement, kinematics, free fall problems, time graphs, for those of you who are taking AP physics, vectors, projectile motions, relative velocity. And this is going to cover the first two semesters of physics. So feel free to take a look at this when you get a chance uh, for those of you who are taking physics next semester. Now, one thing I do want to mention is my physics final exam review video. This video is about six hours long and As you can see, it has about 100 problems. So for those of you who love to cram, this can help you out, especially if you study for it about a week or two in advance. Now beyond that are my Physics 2 videos like Kalum's Law, Electric Fields, Electric Potential, Electric Potential Energy, for those of you who are taking the second semester of physics. So feel free to take a look at these videos as well. And of course, uh, the final exam for that too. So you can access all of that with the worksheets on my Patreon page. Now, before we move on to point number four, I want to ask you, the viewer, a question. What study and tips do you have for getting through a course like physics? That is, if you took it already? And if you haven't, what studying tips do you have in general for learning new things? Post your answers in the comment section below. I'm really curious to see what techniques you use in studying math and science courses. Now, number four, this one is a big one, and that is working through old practice exams. If your teacher provides old practice exams, that's a good approximation of the real exam, I highly recommend working through them. 
By doing this, you're going to know the key topics in the lesson that you should focus your efforts on. Personally, I like to work through old practice exams, making sure I know how to answer almost every question on it so that I'll be ready for any type of question that my teacher may throw on the final exam. Now, another thing that's going to help, and it's really worth the investment of time. If you can take just 10, 15 minutes, actually, before I mention this, let me ask you a question. When you select a course, do you also take the time to select the right professor? Or do you simply just pick whatever course is available? I think it's worth the investment to take 10 to 15 minutes to do some research to select the right professor. You can do this at ratemyprofessor.com. You can see what other students are saying about the professor that you're thinking of choosing. The reason being is this single step can make a big difference in how well you do in your next course. Personally, I would like to select a professor who not only teaches well, but who offers a lot of practice exams, who have a very structured syllabus, and who also offers a lot of extra credit assignments. Because if you can get these three things, it's going to make it a lot easier for you to get an A in your next class, or even in physics, if that's what you're taking. If you don't select a professor who does not offer practice exams or extra credit assignments. You can still pass the course, but you're at a disadvantage. It's gonna be harder for you to get an A. So I highly recommend taking a few minutes to choose the right professor because the professor you select will either make your next semester a lot easier or a lot harder. Now I have another question for you, the viewer. What courses would you like to see me create? Or what type of videos do you want to see me make? I made another video on this previously, and I've noticed some of the comments that uh, some of you wrote down. You mentioned microeconomics, macroeconomics, differential equations, discrete mathematics, biochemistry, to name a few. There were some other courses but those are the main ones that I've noticed and also linear algebra. But if you have a course that you'd like to see that is not one of the ones that I mentioned, even if it is, you could still post your comments uh, below the video. So I'll be taking a look at that after I post this video to see uh, what the demand is out there.